away. We have left and we are on our way to the lake. We're going to see if this lake is as good as it looks on the map. With Beasley and Rodney, we are ready to rock and roll. Are these your dogs? Yeah. You want to take pictures of them or something? No, I was just wondering why they're running around in the road. They're my dogs and they're open road, public road. Um, it's hazardous to your dogs though. Well, as long as the ignorant people like you don't come along, it ain't no problem. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on just a minute there. Ignorant people like me? Ignorant people like me? Listen, I have a response for this guy, only I learned that you don't make enemies with someone right before you're about to leave your vehicle in a deserted parking lot for hours. So rather than give, me, give him a piece of my mind then, I'm going to give him a piece of my mind right now. Only I'm going to do it in a separate video. The link to that separate video is in the description or on TopiSierra.com. I now return you to your regularly scheduled video. Enjoy. <laughs> You didn't think getting to this lake was going to be easy, did you? Finally, water. And we're off. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. Nothing around at all. But mountains and trees. Totally quiet. No helicopters, no boats, no jet skis. Nobody screaming. Nobody at all. Serenity. Complete serenity. And we've only just begun. by mountains and water and still have yet to spot one single solitary person 
Not one boat. Not one jet ski. Not one helicopter. Nothing. It's great outdoors. My buds. Beasley and Rodney. Well, our sunny day turned into a, a cloudy day. But it was getting kind of hot, so we needed a little bit of a break. Finally, another human being. But they're not in the water. They're camping. These are really amazing. This lake has made it this long without a shred of development. That's a dam over there. Yona Dam. Not one lake house. Not one marina. Not one snack bar even. Nothing. And I'm really glad that it's remained this way. I hope it remains this way forever. But, I don't know how realistic that is. So we're going to take it right at that bend over there. We're going to go into Tallulah Gorge. There's the people in a canoe or a fishing boat. That's a fishing boat, I think. Yep. And finally, We've rounded the corner. We are now entering Tallulah Gorge. There's actually a little picnic area up there. A little over overlook. But the actual observation deck, we won't be able to get to that because that's a little farther up the dam, past the dam, which we cannot go up the creek. But we will get to see the dam and the, um, the hydroelectric building. For those of you who don't know, that is a hemlock. And hemlocks are beautiful native evergreen conifers and they're being attacked by something called the woolly adelgid which is an insect infestation and it is absolutely decimating the trees wiping them out they could become extinct although I know there's some efforts underway to stop the hemlock woolly adelgid you can see the leaves, the, the very barren tree. Here's another one in the sunlight. It's really sad to see such a beautiful tree being attacked like that. These line lakes and rivers and they're found all over the mountains here. They're also found way to the north and their range extends well into Canada. And that's what their foliage is sort of supposed to look like. And this is what it looks like now. Dead. Lots of dead branches. It's nice when you can find a little shady spot. If you could plan to paddle at a certain time of the day where you have a tree shadow, like we have on this side, instead of that side, you could paddle in the shade. And that way your bearded collie can stay nice and comfortable. He was getting kind of hot. So was I. Waterfall. 
you know, paddling in this section of the gorge reminds me a lot of a ride at Disney World. It's sort of like when you're surrounded by these huge boulders. It reminds me of being on a ride like uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. I was expecting some pirates to come out and start singing Yo Ho Yo Ho. A pirate's life for Beasley. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna find the waterfall any second. Oh man, nice and cool in here. And it smells amazing. So you just don't find stuff like this at the lakes that are developed. You just don't find it. Whoops, sorry about that piece. <laughs> I can't tell if that's another paddle or not. Uh, looks like it's a stump sticking out of the water. Still haven't seen too much other intelligent life. But I do love seeing those rock outcroppings. We're in the gorge now. I love to explore those rocks and those caves. And you can paddle under there. There's the hydroelectric water plant. Such a beautiful building. Or such a beautiful lake. Is that not the prettiest PowerPoint you've ever seen? certain times of the year they open the floodgates and paddlers can actually ride the rapids, the more adventurous ones, well the more daredevilish ones, we manage to have lots of adventures without class 4 and 5 rapids, don't we Beasley? We don't want Beasley to fall out, that's the problem there, that's why we don't do that. to have a, a map of the lake that you're in so that you, you know kind of where you are and you have the shape. When you have the shape, you know how to 
if you're in a crunch or time, you could, you know that you're going in a straight line, you, you could cut across diagonally from point to point, like I'm doing now, as opposed to just hugging the, the shoreline. And that will save you time if you need to save time if there's some weather rolling in or it's starting to get dark. Just having a map and staying sort of aware of where you're where you're located in these big lakes, of course, that will uh, that, that can prove to be very helpful. And I don't mean a, a cell phone map I, or something on your mobile device. I'm talking an actual printout because you can't always count on mobile devices working in places like this. But, and especially if you get it wet or something, it's really helpful to have a paper printout. You never know when you get any one of those. So, bring a map with you. Just print out a, a map, it doesn't have to be real detailed, just showing the, uh, the shape of the lake. Some topography would be nice. and. If there's certain landmarks that you could write on there, just so you know you have some. If you haven't been there before, if you're not familiar, you'll have some kind of bearing as to where you are. For example, that campsite right there. You can write that as you're as you're navigating, and you see it. You can make a note. There's a campsite so that you know that you're where you are, because it's really hard to see where you are in a place like this because there's just, everything kind of looks the same. Trees. And if you don't know all these little codes, you know which one to turn down to get to the exit where you started. Well, another advantage to having a map is you could find these little, little codes. So if we need to take a shade break, which we, we did need to take a little shade break, you know exactly where to turn. Ugh, more dead hemlocks. And I look at this beautiful beach. My favorite tree in the forest. Great for shade. And look at that bark. Usually people carve their initials in these and it never goes away. But I don't see that. I don't see it on that one. That one got lucky. It's one of the great things when you go to such unspoiled wilderness. There really isn't a whole lot of evidence of humans. I don't like humans too much, do we, Beasley? Yeah, there's the waterfall. So far we have come across, we paddled about six miles, and we've come across a grand total of six people in two boats, and three boats, they were two per boat, and they were non-motorized. So, we have this place practically all to ourselves. Early fall color, that looks like a sourwood. Well, I'm glad I turned in here. This turned into a really nice place to take a shade break and a lunch break. I was sitting here, been here for about 35 minutes, just letting my uh, lunch go down. Beasley's laying there pretending he can't smell any food. All the while expecting some. And Roddy's back there still taking a nap. So, all the time I've been here, having lunch. I have not seen one person pass by out there and I've still I've still only come across six people in about as many miles that I've paddled. So you know as much as I love having having a lake that's free from the masses and all the all the boats and development and golf courses and you know and part of me wonders, 
you know, if, if one day this, this beautiful land were to be cleared and made into a, a development, a, a subdivision or hotel or resort or golf course or something like that, would anybody even notice? Would anybody even miss this place? I mean, I don't... It's one thing not have a, a lake for the masses, but it's another thing to have such a beautiful place that nobody ever takes advantage and nobody ever comes to visit. It's a little... It's a little worrisome. I mean, it's, it's great, but at the same time, I worry that that without anybody using it it could one day be gone and nobody would care anyway on to happy thoughts it's funny how the clouds paint shadows of the mountains like to point out that this is where the movie the classic thriller deliverance was filmed he got a little pretty mouth thing so far nobody here has told me i have a pretty mouth but somebody did once say you have a pretty dog i guess they were referring to rodney not beasley even though beasley is very pretty as you can see This part of the lake is where the Tatuga River feeds into it. Down that way, we're heading there. But usually by this point, you can see some rafters coming down. But I haven't seen any today. I didn't see any buses waiting for them. Usually you see the buses when there's rafters. So. Place is just deserted. Completely deserted. And I don't mean to I don't mean to make it sound like I'm complaining that there's nobody here. Um, but you know, we're the, we're the, in within one hour of like you know, ten million people. Eight to ten million people, there's not a single other person has said, yeah, let's look at a map. It's kind of really pretty lake to go to where there's no houses and hotels and golf courses and Walmarts. And well, let's go for a paddle where it's nice and quiet. And it's not like the weather's bad. It's just like low 80s. The sky is, as you can see, partly cloudy, mostly sunny if you're an optimist. So, I don't see what the problem is. I don't see why nobody's here. Is there a sea monster in this lake that I don't know about? I heard about a sea monster in Chesapeake Bay that has the head of a, the head of a dragon in the bottom of a mermaid. And from what I hear, this sea monster comes out once a year to eat the first small child it sees. It's true, Google it. But I haven't heard of any sea monsters in this lake at all. Or in the river that we're heading to. So, I don't know why people aren't here. I really don't. People, what's wrong with you? Get out and have an adventure. Finally, people. It looks like they are in the rafts coming down the river. Hi, Stop shaking it up. Well, we come across the little island and I think it's time to have a little pit stop. The boys are doing their little potty dance. Which means, Dad, I gotta go, I gotta go. 
So we're going to stop right here on this little island. Hopefully there's a little sandy spot or a place that isn't covered in grass. Well, the island is all grass, but I did want to point something out. See that tree? That is a mimosa. And it does not belong here. That is an invasive species. And unfortunately, those trees self sow in natural areas like this. They're transported by water, wind, and wildlife. The three W's from trees that are in people's gardens or in other mimosas that are spreading. And they're sold as, a, as an ornamental in some unscrupulous nurseries don't seem to care that the trees are a problem and they're, they're on numerous do not plant lists. Those trees, you may wonder what's the problem. They're beautiful. Well, they're displacing native trees, trees that are needed for, for wildlife. They provide food and, and they create biodiversity, but those mimosas do nothing of the sort. They just spread and take over. They're they're sort of they're sort of like concrete. You know, they're like development. They spread like crazy. And there's nothing you can do about it. There's no natural pest or predators that, that attack this here. Oh, we are going to hit land. I predict. What is that? It is a bunch of grass. Anyway, don't plant mimosas. Time to head back. We've gone about as far as we could go before we hit the rapids. We can't really paddle upstream in shallow water. So, time to head back. Well, we finally found a few more people. Some kayakers there. And some more back there. Coming off the Chatuga. Let's check that waterfall out. Look at that steep mountain. What happens to a quiet lake? This lake is absolutely crawling in waterfalls. Every time you come to one, you just rush a cool air with like air conditioning. dead, mature hemlocks. It makes a major, major hole in the forest. Such a, such a tragedy. And on this side too, you can see them all. another waterfall in your future. I already feel the gush of cool wind. I hear it though. I feel it. See, look at the hair on Beasley's head. It's already, 
So I get that gush of cold air blowing over here. Leaking all over there too. Well, if there's any question about how this lake got filled with the water, it's all these waterfalls. Actually, it doesn't look like we're going to make it in time for the rain. I think we're going to get a rainbow. Almost back. We're back on dry land. Me, Beasley, and Rodney, we all made it back on pavement at the top of the mountain. As you can see, with a little bit of planning, you too can find an undeveloped lake if that's what you want. If you don't like all the crowds and the boats and the jet skis and all the people and the noise and, and uh, development, you gotta find a lake like this one and they're out there. You just gotta find them. It takes a little bit of work. But they're there. They're deserted, but they're, they're beautiful and they're waiting for you. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Until next time, get out there and have an adventure.